Hello, I'm Chuck Naslin, Vice President of Ameren UE's Power Operations. As you probably know by now, on August 10th, a major fire broke out at Venice Plant. During the next few minutes, I'd like to provide you with an overview of that fire. What happened at Venice reinforces the importance of our emergency procedures, the evacuation and accountability of our people, and the status of our fire protection equipment and emergency response plans. We are very fortunate that during this event, none of the 24 employees working in the plant were seriously injured. Still, there are lessons that we all need to learn from this event. Going forward, we must always be focused on ways to prevent such an event and plan on how to minimize the consequences of such an event. Let's begin by reviewing what happened on August 10th. It was late in the afternoon and all six units were operating. Then around 6 p.m. on Unit 1, a fire broke out. What you see in these video clips is an overview of the fire. You will see the Unit 3 transformer as it ignites as viewed from downtown and you can see the spectacular explosion in the air. As the evening progressed, basically fires were broken out in the south of the plant and the north of the plant as you see in this overview shot. Early in the event, the unit ox transformer for Unit 1 exploded, as shown in this picture, on the northwest corner of the building. At this point in the fire, you can see the entire area was engulfed in smoke. Here we see a close-up of the Unit 3 transformer that was viewed earlier from downtown St. Louis. One of the big concerns of this fire was the electrical fault that progressed during the evening, as shown by this bright flashing in the background. This particular flashing or electrical fault was not extinguished until later in the evening around 8 p.m. when we finally were able to drop all the power to Venice plant. Looking at the sequence of events now, at 5.30 p.m. all Venice units were running. Here we see a simple one line of the Venice plant showing the transformers and the generators that are involved in this fire. The fire actually starts on unit one at 5.55 p.m., a Lubo line on the front of Unit 1 generator ruptures and the fire starts. Above, we see damage in the area underneath the turbine generator on pipes and electrical conduit. At 6.10 p.m., operators manage to get all of the units offline. At 6.15 p.m., the 13-8 switchgear on Unit 1 and all the DC control power of the plant and switchyard fails. Looking back at our one line then, with a fire on Unit 1, the fire now moves over to station service transformers 1A and 1B. With electrical faults on our system on the 2400 kV bus and the 138 kV bus, the fire now moves also to transformer number 3. From 6.15 to 8 p.m., our 138 kV and 69 kV substations continue to feed the electrical fault. In this picture, we see the result of the fire on station service transformers 1A and 1B. Here we see a picture of transformer number three, which burned up during the fire. Looking at our electrical one line again, as the fire progressed and the electrical fault continued, transformer bank number one and number two were next to fault, followed by transformer number four. Backfeeding the fault from the system fails transformers 1, 2, and 4. At 8 p.m., all power to the plant and the substation is finally dead. In this picture, we see the electrical bus duct, which was burning with the three-phase fault, giving the bright star look of an earlier picture. At 2 a.m. in the morning, the fires are finally burned out. Subsequent damage includes this panel, which is located underneath Unit 1's turbine generator. Additional damage includes Unit 1's boiler control board. A summary of the major event consequences are all 24 of our employees escaped with only two minor injuries, no major environmental spills or releases to the Mississippi River. However, the Illinois EPA is still looking for problems. OSHA, they continue to investigate Major news media coverage occurred during this event and was a major challenge for us to manage. All of our employees performed exceptionally well throughout this event. 
A summary of major equipment damage includes Unit 1 turbine generator, Unit 1 electrical buses and transformers, floors and structural steel for Units 1 and 2, Unit 2 step-up transformer, Units 3 and 4 step-up transformers, Units 3 and 4 bus duct, and our 69 to 138 kV tie transformer, number 4. Looking now at our preliminary cost estimate of the fire, below I'd like to summarize what those are. Unit 1's retirement cost is around $600,000. Units 2 through 4 electrical restoration is estimated at $22 million. Cleanup and restart of Units 5 and 6, a half million dollars. And T&D restoration cost as a result of this event, $1.75 million dollars. For a total cost of this event, approximately $25 million. We do fortunately have insurance coverage. This insurance coverage is provided by Lloyd's of London. This policy provides coverage of a $750 million cap with a $5 million deductible. And it also includes asset replacement. The recovery schedule for Venice plant is as follows. Units 5 and 6, which is 200 megawatts, or half of the plant output, we have back online. Units three and four, which is worth 200 megawatts, will take about six to nine months prior to get replacement transformers. Unit two, which is 40 megawatts, is still under review to determine the complete damage and whether unit two should be retired or restored back to its full output. Unit one, which is 40 megawatts, will be retired. As you just saw, power plant fires can be very destructive and costly. The Venice operators did an excellent job in shutting down and safely securing the units. But as I mentioned earlier, there are still many lessons to be learned from this event. Accountability of personnel during a fire is of high importance, and the use of assembly areas to help accomplish this task will need to be evaluated for all of our plants. Operator actions to secure electrical equipment and areas adjacent to a fire to prevent major bus faults will need to be assessed for all locations. Training and qualifications of our personnel to utilize firefighting equipment and personal protective devices needs to be reviewed. And we must determine the adequacy of our installed fire protection systems. These are just a few of the lessons that became apparent from this fire. And now our job is to make sure we learn everything possible from these lessons in order to prevent similar events. Finally, in closing, I would like to thank all of the Venice employees who helped shut down the facility safely and to the employees from our other plants and departments who also provided assistance. Thank you. So